Welcome to Pete. How are you, Pete? I'm fine. I'm sorry for the delay. I apparently had the, the wrong link. So oh, no <laughs> I was problem. looking for you guys on Google Meet for some reason. So no anyway. problem. Welcome and uh, feel free to share your screen when you're ready. Uh, yeah, Pete is exactly. joining us from Brussels, correct? Um, no, yeah, we're in Gant, Belgium. Close to Brussels. Yeah. Okay. okay. I hey, hope you're, you're seeing you're... my screen correctly because I'm seeing it flipped, but that's probably okay, just on. a Zoom let me, thing. Let me spotlight you. Let me go ahead and replace you. You're not using screen share. You're doing it that way. There we go. We see you now. And do you see it the right way? Yes. OK, that's fine, because I see it inverted. But that's OK. I've got another screen. So anyway, thanks for the opportunity to um, to show a couple of uh, things in, uh, in Luminar. And um, but first of all, I have to say I really like the, the new interface here with the, um, with just all the tools in a long scrolling list because as you know by now i'm a bit scatterbrained and i always had to think you know which tool is in which section and now i just i i have them all uh in a in a row here and and what i like about that too is that it actually uh kind of incites more uh exploration of the tools and it uh incites me to try more of them so that's something i really like anyway um for this here i i'd like to do a quick demo of um of an uh of a new texture that i'm going to overlay that's one of the things i like to do whenever i photograph people in the studio instead of putting a texture background behind them in the shoot i'm actually going to photograph them on on a gray uh, roll of seamless uh, paper and then in uh, luminar i can i can have access to any texture that i want uh, after the fact and if i'm bored of it i can change it out again so but first before i go in there i'm gonna do a little bit of an enhancing i'm gonna use accent ai to bring in a little bit of detail and i'm actually also going to go to the light panel and um, I'm going to increase my shadows just to get some more detail in the in the clothing. And I'm also going to go another one of my favorite features is uh, structure AI, which uh, I like because again, this is a steampunker. So it's all about structure. And I want to add some patina to the to his outfit, but not to his face because he's a buddy of mine and he wouldn't appreciate it that I make him look 10 years older. But that's what Structure AI does. It, it enhances structure, but it, it kind of uh, uh, doesn't do it on the skin so that you get, um, you get nice detail where you want it to be and you don't age people uh, uh, like a normal structure. So I think that's looking good. Um, in fact, let me... Uh, zoom in here yeah that's looking nice you see how how it nicely enhanced the fur and everything so now i'm going to go into my local masking tool and i'm going to add a texture and let's uh, load one up and this is just one of my own texture packs so let me oh i kind of like this one here let's use this one so this is a should, no, should have used the lower resolution one but anyway i'm sure it will work fine i've got a new uh, mac mini by the way and uh, so i'm for those of the viewers wondering if um it runs on uh, if luminar already runs on mac mini uh it, it does it's it's true rosetta as far as i've understood but it, it works flawlessly on on this mac mini here so i think that's good news um so let me one of the things i like here is the improved controls you have over scaling and placing the texture so now i'm looking at it at 50 percent opacity but i'm gonna uh increase that opacity and of course my subject disappears but here in the advanced settings i can change the blending mode so just like with the layers tool in uh, luminar 4 uh, in the brush tool here you have access to your layers and a layer a blending mode that works really well for this type of stuff is is either overlay or soft lights it kind of depends on how strong you want the effect to be so i'm going to go with 
overlay because we're going a bit over the top here anyway. And as you see, the overlay really does a great job at with blending into the um, to the background and also to the darker parts of my subject. So what which what at first looked like a really complex masking job has become a lot simpler thanks to the overlay blending mode. And as you can see, really the texture only very much appears in the in the brighter parts of our subject. So what I can do is I can use um, a, a brush or an eraser to paint it away. Now there's one thing, and I think that's something to do with, this is a new pen display I have here. And normally when I hit the eraser, it should turn to the erase mode. Um, but for some reason here, it, it, it doesn't, and it, it actually maps the uh, brush to the eraser. But if I'm using a mouse, for example, then then you see I'm fine. So I think it's it's probably a driver issue. So don't be confused. I'm, I'm actually wanting to erase, but I have to press the, the paint mask here. So um, anyway, um, so what I can do now is just simply, you know, and I don't have to be precise because everywhere where it's dark, it's already kind of masking automatically. And I'm simply brushing away the excess texture over the areas where it's visible. And I can adjust my radius a little bit more to go into the finer, you know, nooks and crannies. Hey, Pete. Can I yeah. stop you for just one second? Yeah, sure. So you're sharing your screen as a video screen. Would you mind clicking the share screen button and just share it direct? We're having a few folks having a hard time seeing some of your details. It's not quite oh, as Oh, really? Crisp. Okay. Uh, share screen. Button at the bottom, share screen. Um, that's this here, I guess. There we go. Like this? So it's, yep, it's, it's crisper there. So go ahead and share. Okay, your, cool. That's cool, perfect. Cool, cool, Thank cool. you so much. All right, you're welcome. Um, so anyway, that's... Uh, you see, I'm not, I don't even bother going into the, do, the darker areas like here. I'm just going to, I mean, if I would print this at two by one meters, I might, but ju just for, you know, for like Facebook or whatever, this is, this is more than detailed enough like this. And then I can go on and, and, and tweak this some more. For example, I can uh, make my background a bit darker, should I want to. And then maybe uh, I'll add a little bit of a vignette. And again, this is one of the things I like about this new interface is that it's just it's just there, and I don't have to look whether it's in the essentials tab or you see like this. And I'm also a big fan of the of the the LUTs. So let's uh, have a look. It's under the mood section right and i like how you get a preview when you hover over them so let's do something like kind of like this one just gonna decrease the amount a little bit and so there you have it this is just uh, one of the cool things you can do with textures and with the brush uh in um, in luminar now Another one of my uh, favorite features, obviously, is the, the new uh, sky replacement. And I particularly like, I, I, like I chose this example because I was actually surprised that the new um, reflection uh, technology or, or algorithms so this is a scene in Charleroi. This is in the south. It's, it's uh, the south of the country it used to be very much uh, uh heavy industry and some of it is still there but some of it is has gotten all derelict and it's 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 great for urban exploring and so this is shot on a hilltop somewhere and i just like the view but um it's it's not a simple scene to put in a new sky especially with the this is like a water basin uh and um it's it's uh I was really curious whether the AI would pick up on this being water or might be confused. So let's have a quick look. Now, first, I'm going to, this is another thing I like about uh, Luminar 
that you can, this photo isn't completely straight, so I'll slightly straighten it first. And as you can see, we now have some perspective issues going on, but I can also, I can either try to automatically straighten it, or I have my image 3D transform, which lets me manually straighten this. And now I think I'm, I'm good. So now let's go into the sky AI. And I'm going to pick an extreme sky, which might not be the best realistic sky, but just to show you what I meant about this, uh, the algorithm finding the, the reflection. So this one here, and I really think it's crazy that you see the, the it, it really put in a reflection in this strange shaped pool of water here. So let me, in fact, let me increase that reflection amount, as you can see. So I think that's really, really impressive, right? Now, if I want to make this a little bit more um, believable, I can play with my relighting strength. And I can also, um, let's have a look. Uh, I wanna, probably I'll want to, um, defocus my sky a little bit. That also goes a long way as to making this more believable. I can put in some atmospheric haze. All right. And one thing that also helps if you really like change the, the, the time of day, basically, this was shot at noon and I'm turning it into a night scene almost. So is to just darken uh, the, uh, the overall exposure of your foreground because that's what basically if it's night, the foreground wouldn't be so bright and I can cool it off a little bit. And you see, so you can really start to even make something completely surrealistic as this uh, halfway believable. What you can also do is to throw an overall LUT over this so that it also like, for example, if I choose one of the cooler LUTs, any residual difference in color will be um, um, less visible and, and it helps to tie everything uh, together. And now finally, I might take away a little bit of the saturation of, um, of the sky, because I think it's a bit too much compared to the rather desaturated foreground. So what I will do is I will just add a um, gradient mask. And Indeed, you could actually adjust some of that. that. That works too there, but you can also adjust some of that right back in your sky AI filter. There's controls yeah, for the image. Exactly, exactly. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna, you know, slightly lower my saturation like this. Yeah, that's a much and, better match. Yeah, 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 exactly. So you have, when you put in a new sky, the AI technology does a great job, but sometimes obviously you have to tweak it. But again, I'm, I'm super impressed that, that the AI, um, and I didn't give you guys this image, so uh, I'm super impressed that the AI found, found out about this. Now, um, you just tell me when I have to stop because uh, I have another one here. Yeah, go for it. You've got about uh, another seven minutes before our next guest arrives. So okay, cool. People are so enjoying this, this is... and Pete, people are also wondering what's your website. They want to find you there. Oh yeah, it's uh, morethanwords.be. So like the extreme song, you know, more than words, but in one word, dot be. I'll put it in the um, chat for everyone. Yeah, great, thanks. So. Um, this is something I work a lot with flash outside and especially outside you, you, your flashes are never powerful enough. So one of the features that I really love is the, the face light uh, feature. And it's like a, a digital fill flash, which basically uh, just brightens up the face of your subject even more. And what I really like about it is that it doesn't only work on frontal uh, shots, like uh, you know frame filling frontal portraits but it also works on a shot like this here yeah like this this is a mongolian um uh, horse herder and the story was that he he was traveling halfway through mongolia because he had lost a couple of his horses and he was 
looking for them. And that's really, a, I mean, an amazing story in itself. But so I used Flash on him, but I want to accentuate that a little bit. And so normally what I would do in Lightroom is like, put a radial filter on there. Um, but then if I have like 25 shots of the guy, I would need to adjust that radial filter. And in the in the um, sky, or rather in the in the face light tool, it, it all works automatically. So I'll just go to the face. And uh, as you can see, if I increase the face light, it finds the face even when it's not completely turned towards the camera and it just brightens it. And that's amazing because you, I could actually, if I know that I generally do this, I could turn this into a preset and or a template and then the template would take care of that for me automatically and it would only brighten a place on on my photo where there is actually a, a face to be found contrary to for example a radial filter in lightroom i can turn that into a preset but it will brighten anything even if there's no face to be found so that's one of the cool things about the uh, ai technology um talking about templates this is also, I think, uh, I really like the, the templates from the, the cinematic uh, movie uh, collection, like this one here, the Blockbuster collection. And for example, suppose I want to turn this into a black and white uh, to, to add to the vintage feel. So like I have a couple here and I actually really like this one. The only thing is that this seems to put in a bit of, of grain, I think. Um, so I could actually go into edit and have a look if that's really the case. And all the tools that it changes are um, have a little dot in front of them. So actually it doesn't apparently, so that's good. Uh, but suppose it did add some grain that I didn't want to add, I could, Oh, it does. Oh, I see it here. So there's a dot in front of film grain. So this means all the um, all the tools that have a little dot in front of them are tools that the template uses. So that, this is really handy, first of all, to get to know the tools. And if you like a template, the effect of a template, I would uh, encourage you to, to have a look at which tools have dots in front of them and then selectively turn those on and off and that way you can see which tools contribute to which part of a template. And then you can start creating your own in a much more, much more informed way. But anyway, as you can see in this case, it's also handy if you want to take away one specific element of, um, of, a, of a template. So in this case, I, I'll take away the, um, the film grain and I got a much more crisp image. And then maybe what I'll do is, again, use my face light to, as you can see, brighten the face a little bit more. And maybe I will crop this into a uh, 16 by nine crop, because that's something I often do, especially if it's for display on, uh, on, on screens. So I'll go to 16 by nine and there we have it. And so I just created a really cool uh, black and white and I, and I did it in, in, I think I wasn't counting three or four clicks. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So Pete, our, our next guest has arrived, but I want to give you time to finish this out. Since you made such a cool look here, would you mind showing how to save it as a template so you can re-access sure. it on your own images? Sure, so that's that's the cool thing that, you see, I, I based myself off of this Film Noir preset. And so now this says here, Film Noir, between parentheses, edited. So what I can do now is click here and choose Save and it will now be saved to my presets. And so if I use, for example, let's use this one here. If I now go to my templates, then under my templates will be this one. And it by default, it takes the name of the one it was modeled after, but you can rename that. For example, black and white, uh, no grain 
right? I can even uh, favorite, uh, add it as a favorite. And then if I click on that, I will have exactly the same look as I did. And the only thing I would do here is probably increase the shadows a little bit more. But again, two clicks would give me uh, a really nice image. And I think that's what editing and so ed software should be all about, to get great results in a minimum of time. That's awesome. I love this. And I love how you were able to really pull things together, but still create your own look. So you built upon some starter material and then sure. finessed it. So Pete, I know that you regularly work with Adobe software as well. Are you able to use Luminar as a plug into that workflow if you need to, so that when you do decide to work in Adobe, you could still have the benefits of Luminar? Sure, 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 sure. Actually, my, my, f I, I will either, it depends on the number of images. Sometimes if I have a lot of them, I will, I will work in Luminar um, and because you can copy paste uh, adjustments really quickly. And sometimes I work in, uh, in Lightroom, but generally, but that's maybe for another uh, session one day. So my preferred workflow in Lightroom is to send the image from Lightroom over to Photoshop as a smart object and then run Luminar as a smart filter because that way I get to uh, redo stuff if I later change my mind. And now I rarely do in the end looking back, but it's just the peace of mind that I have that should I want to, I can, you know. Very cool, very cool. And we'll show that, we'll show that smart object workflow a little bit later. All uh, right, again, yeah. For, for those of you who want to catch up with Pete, uh, we put his link into the chat. Uh, his website is morethanwords.be and he's got some great resources up there as well as yeah. some inspirational images I encourage you guys to check out. We also put into the chat uh, our first giveaway. So we put in our texture preset and uh, you'll be able to see that as well. So if you guys are interested in that, you can check that out and uh, that's perfect. So thank you for that, Pete.